So I have that it is five o'clock and I will call a meeting to order. We have Vic Dwyer with us. We have Sandy Levine and we have uh, Paul with us. Welcome. Um, are there any other amendments? Recording in progress. Oh, we got some more people coming in here. We have we have Sky Barish. We have I'm trying to Jason. Hi, Jason. Hi, Sky. I think that is it. Welcome, everyone. Um, any any additional amendments to the uh, agenda, Sarah? Uh, no. Okay. And Sarah Bajay just answer, entered. And Eric, there you go. Okay. They're, they're coming in fast and furious here. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Eric. Welcome. We've just we've just barely called a meeting to order, so you haven't uh, you haven't missed a thing, as they say. Um, so uh, the first item on our agenda is appointing a Middlesex voter to fill a vacant select board seat until a March 2023 town meeting. The board will consider applications received so far from Sky Barish, Sarah Berger, Vic Dwyer, and Jason Merrill. Action likely. Um, before we get into this, I would just like to say it is very refreshing and nice to have four people who are interested in uh, taking on this position. In the past, we have very seldom, we have very seldom had uh, had choices or opportunity to pick. And I, I, and I'm sure the other board members read your letters uh, carefully, and we appreciate very much uh, your interest in the position. So thank you all for that. I guess what I would what I would uh, offer to the board as a way to go about this is give each one of the candidates just a couple of minutes to talk about why they're interested in taking on this position, and then we can see uh, where we go from there. Does that sound right to everybody? Yep. Okay. So in no no particular order other than the way you appear on my screen. Uh, Jason, you're up first. So in a couple of minutes, uh, tell us. Tell us what you'd like to tell us about your interest in this position. Are you muted, Jason? Anything. There you go. Hmm? Yeah, I can't hear him. No, I can't, I can't hear you, Jason. <laughs> No go. Yes, no go. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to someone else. Let's do this. We'll, we'll, we'll move on to the others. Jason, you keep trying to get yourself unmuted. Jason, so if you uh, try turning off your video. That might help. Uh, Sarah, you're next on my screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Sarah Berger. I've been living in Middlesex for about, I believe this will be my fifth summer. Um, I'm originally from the Northeast Kingdom. And in the time I've lived in Middlesex, I've sort of gotten slowly more and more involved. Um, I think I was first looped in to do some work with the Emergency Management Committee during COVID. Uh, I've also helped with some technical assistance on Zoom calls. I was on the Zoning Board of Administrators. Uh, and then left that to become assistant zoning administrator, which sounds fancier than it is. Um, Kevin only has to recuse himself a couple times a year, but I've gotten to learn about uh, a lot of the town's functions through that. And then for a brief moment, I also filled in as town lister when we were obliged to have two. Um, so while I learned about that position, I did not spend a lot of time doing it. And I would say that you know, serving in town government has always been on my list. My family has a long history of service in, in that regard in Vermont. And uh, it seems like a great opportunity to work with a bunch of people and learn more about what we do in town and also bring some of my new skill sets. Um, I'm sure you guys saw my CV. Uh, I have an executive level position in a nonprofit. Um, and I also have had various jobs as like a civil servant. Um, and I'm currently an upper level program manager. I work remotely. So 
yeah, I think I have the skill set and uh, look forward to serving the town. And I'm, of course, happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Sky. Hi, everyone. I'm Sky Barsh. I live um, at the end of Notch Road. I formerly lived on Knapp Road, um, and I am interested in serving on the board. Um, I love Middlesex. I love being part of this community. Um, I have a lot of experience in communication and um, uh, community building. And in my former life, I was a reporter and attended, I don't know how many select board meetings in central Vermont and city council meetings in South Burlington. Um, so I've seen a lot of, um, a lot of things play out through the years from Act 60 to Act 250 um, and how um, state legislation impacts local communities and how local communities can um, build things and um, policies to um, at the local level that have really incredible impacts. Um, and I would just like to be part of that. I think Middlesex is at a really interesting time with um, some of the changes in the village and um, I, I think I mentioned in my letter, I'm interested in seeing that area of town become more walkable and bikeable. I'm really interested in broadband access. I also work remotely and it's very frustrating that a lot of the times my colleagues don't can't hear me and I'm cutting out. And um, I think for economic development and for young families, um, high speed internet access is super important. Um, and yeah, I think that's, uh, that's, that's just sums it up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Victor. Yes. Um, my, I've been in town since 1969, if that makes any difference. Uh, born and brought up here in Vermont. <clears throat> uh, I've been attending meetings here uh, for uh, ever since before the pandemic. And then uh, I've been the road commissioner. I think it's... Uh, when uh, Shane took over about a month after Shane took over and, uh, and I've been the road commissioner uh, ever since and have gone through uh, hearing of a new road commissioner and uh, actually having to take over and uh, do both the road commissioner and the road foreman work for a short period of time during the transition. Um, my background has always been uh, is uh, I was an engineer for the state of Vermont for uh, close to 50 years. Um, I do, uh, I do uh, enjoy working with the uh, road commissioners and uh, the town's, uh, the town crew. And uh, so it, it's, 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 uh, I, I, there's some things we still want to do. We do day to day. Uh, we just uh, attend a lot of meetings. We just got off a budget committee meeting, uh, the uh, road crew. And so uh, I've, I've, uh, I think being a, a, a on the select board would help my help uh, for us to complete our work as uh, in, in the road crew. 90% of uh, our budget goes to the road crew and 90% of the, the, the monies. So um, I found that a few times that it, not, not having a vote was kind of a, a hold up and um, so uh, I think that uh, it would be good to be uh, on the select board and uh, be the road commissioner as it has uh, that, that those two have gone together for years. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. We're back. Can you hear me? Yes. You got me. Wonderful. Yep. Well, um, for the past 27 years, I've been volunteering uh, for the town of Middlesex, whether it be uh, on the fire department or as the uh, town fire warden. Um, I spent many years uh, coaching over on uh, the fields over at Romney School, uh, mostly baseball. Um, I've been a community member, like I said, for the past 27 years as an adult. Um, I lived here my whole life. Um, On the fire department, I think I was there for 18 years. Um, I was there to help get our first new fire truck in over 30 years. Uh, I was on the building committee for the new fire station that we had built. 
Um, I'm a small business owner. I have local employees. I've got two different businesses. I've got a property business where I manage and own rental units, commercial and residential. Uh, and then I own a construction company where we're currently down here on Center Road putting in culverts for the town of Middlesex. Um, I've been involved in local youth organizations where I've been a board member um, for Central Vermont Skating Association for 12 years. Um, we've helped grow that organization into what it is today. Um, since then, I've left that organization and I'm working with another small organization and coaching youth hockey. Um, as far as being on the select board, I wouldn't necessarily say it's something that I've been dreaming about doing, but I feel at this point in my life where my kids are a little older, um, I feel that I could uh, fit in with the current board um, and help keep this community the way that it is. Um, I'm a pretty straight shooter. I don't like to hold things back. I tell people how I feel and I like listening to opposing views because my views aren't always the correct views. So um, as a select board member, I feel that I'd uh, help this community. Thank you, Thank Jason. You. Thank you. Uh, board members, questions for any of the candidates? I have one, uh, one question to ask, and I would ask it to all of you and give you a chance to, uh, to answer. Uh, as you know, this appointment tonight is for a position just until town meeting day. And I would be interested in knowing your thoughts about running uh, for office on town meeting day, uh, if you enjoy your short-term experience working on the select board. Uh, why don't we start with uh, Sarah? Oh, my screen's all changed around. I'm sorry, Sarah, go ahead. Sure, that's a great question. Uh, that would be my plan, but I also know that I would wanna wait and make sure that I was the, a good fit for the select board uh, and that it was the right place for me to be before I ran. I feel it is, which is why I threw my hat into the ring. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sky? Yeah, same as Sarah. I That would be my intention, but I'd, I'd want to feel it out and make sure it was a good fit all around first. Um, but hopefully, yeah. Okay, thank you. Victor? You're muted. You're muted, Vic. I would anticipate that I would run in March. Uh, I have no reason uh, to think I would do otherwise. Uh, like I said, I enjoy working with, uh, with the road crew. And uh, I, I did, uh, I was select board member in the 90s for a couple, three terms, but uh, and I, and uh, so I'd like to do it again. Okay, thank no you. Problem. Jason. Yeah, did all those uh, former remarks there. You know, if if I fit in with this group and I don't upset too many people, then yeah, I'd run again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you all for those those answers. That's a good, fair answer. Uh, the other thing I would point out is, is any and all of you uh, have the opportunity to run for the seat on town meeting day if you're not one of the, if you're not the person who is appointed tonight. So this is just a short-term appointment with uh, no commitment beyond that. Yes, Randy. I have a question for the group. Um, you know, that the select board is here to represent the best interest of the town um, residents. And sometimes uh, the need to put uh, personal agendas to the side and, and and look at what's best for the town uh, is extremely important to me. Um, and I'm wondering if you're able to, to say that uh, you're able to do so. Um, you know, sometimes people have extremely strong beliefs about things. And um, I just, it's important to know that people are thinking about what's in the best interest of the town. So uh, Sarah, we'll go in the same order. 
Sure. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, I would say that although I grew up in Vermont, you know, I'm I'm fairly new to Middlesex, I think, compared to a lot of people on this call. And while I would broadly say that, like, yes, I want to know what's in the best interest of the town. I don't want to engage in civil debate. I want to learn. I want to work together. Uh, that I don't really have any sort of uh, pet projects or historical desires or anything that would potentially get in the way of me making decisions uh, with the other select board members in the town's best interest. Thank you. Sky? Yeah, I think I have um, a sort of a unique perspective. I don't have kids in the school and I'm on a class four road. So um, I think I have sort of a good sense of understanding like um, how different people interact with the town services differently. Um, and I don't have any agendas. I don't have any conflict of interest when it comes to the board. Um, I think really my heart is in, I, I, I love Middlesex. I just want to keep it a wonderful place to live. Um, a wonderful place for people to raise families and a safe and thriving community. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, uh, no hidden agendas here. Um, I'm uh, kind of a common sense person for uh, the taxpayers. You know, I don't want to go become a municipality like Montpelier where we're buying things that are unnecessary. Um, not to throw Montpelier under the bus, but um, I'm very physically responsible. And, you know, I, I want to do what's best for the taxpayers. Um, so no hidden agendas. Okay, thank you, Victor. Yeah, um, yeah, I have no uh, no hidden agendas, no access to grind. Um, I have been doing this uh, this uh, uh, road commissioner uh, work for uh, about a year and a half or a little more, and uh, I think everything was uh, as as run along. We had uh, we certainly uh, kept on the crew that w was there before, uh, except for a couple of guys. One guy retired. And uh, one guy uh, uh, passed away, and one guy resigned. So yeah, I have uh, uh, no agenda other than uh, and other than uh, making Middlesex affordable to live for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, board members? Yes, Liz. Um, so one thing that I I find sort of special about this board, and I've been on it for. I think this is my eighth year, ninth year. Um, and this is actually probably my last term. So not this March, but in the previous March, I probably will not run again. So there will be another opening. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is that, you know, despite the fact that many of us have, you know, different backgrounds, different work experiences, different political leanings, is that we communicate really well together and we listen to each other really well and i found that you know as board members have changed there's we have a mutual respect um, for each other and are able to listen to the other person's opinion not necessarily agree with them but um but i believe that for the most part we really do come to consensuses on things and also just to sort of remind you that most of the stuff isn't terribly you know fascinating stuff that we're talking about, right? We're, we don't have too many really big, hard decisions to make in this town. Um, but when we do, I believe that we we have really worked well together. Um, and so I would like to hear from each of you sort of, how would you rate, if you had to do it on say a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your communication and listening skills um, when you're in a meeting? Or, or maybe I should back up and say, how would others rate you? Um, when you um, have been in, in your own meetings um, with others. Okay, one is the least and 10 is the yeah, most. Yeah, one is the, the least um, uh, <laughs> level of communication and listening skills, um, you know, so it's just sort of overall respect for what other people have to say. Okay, Sarah. I would say that I would probably be rated as an eight or a nine. Um, like I said, a lot of my background in nonprofit management, and that includes uh, overseas, where there can be 
major cultural gaps and even language barriers and where, you know, it's really easy to like misunderstand or um, have people feel like they're not listened to. So I spent a lot of time in that environment. And then I also was a middle school English teacher for about a decade where you really have to have great listening and communication skills or uh, stuff's going to hit the fan pretty quickly. So yeah, I would rate myself about an eight or a nine. Thank you. Sky. Um, yeah, I would also say an eight or nine. Um, I, I just got a, a nice compliment at work recently and a colleague told me that when I'm at, when I'm in a meeting, she feels like the rest of the team feels like things are going to be okay. Um, and I think that comes from my sense of listening. And, um, I think if anything, sometimes I like pause too much to, um, speak up. So that's, sort of the other side of that coin but i i do think that um i think i listen a lot my my business in montpelier is a fitness studio and it's a lot of folks who are coming in um with either like a health issue or they want to make a big change in their life and that requires a lot of listening and empathy um so i think i've been able to develop that skill pretty well thank you jason sure uh to put a number on it Kind of, kind of hard to say because I'm usually in charge, whether it be at my company where I have people working for me and I got to get my point across and they have to listen. Um, but when I have 30 plus rental units where I've got people living and people working in um, my properties, I got to listen to their needs. Um, Right now I've got 14 residential units where, you know, I'm constantly listening to issues, whether it be, you know, neighbor issues or apartment issues. Um, it seems like I do a lot of listening, um, but I also have to solve a lot of problems on the fly. Um, as, far as, as far as speaking to people, um, like I said before, I, I try to get my point across because I don't like wasting time. Um, let's not beat around the bush. Um, so, you know, similar, similar number eight or nine, I guess, um, pretty much where I'm at. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know as I would put a number on it. We'd hopefully it'd be eight or nine, but, uh, I, uh, Certainly, you take a lot of calls, uh, especially like this mud season we just had. You get a, you get a lot of people that are really angry, and uh, they want to, you know, they want what they want. They want it right away. And and other than uh, one exception uh, that it was just the the, the person was out of con control. Uh, I've even had uh, people call up and be really angry. And uh, by the time we got off the phone, uh, it, we came to a complete understanding that we would do it as uh, we would help them as soon as we could get there. Um, even with the road crew that we took over, there was some speculation on when I was <clears throat> road commissioner, whether everybody would quit or not. And uh, I believe that uh, um, I was able to uh, communicate with the new foreman and the, the existing people, uh, the crew members, uh, Charles and Jay. And uh, I think we have a good working relationship and we all respect each other. Uh, so I must be able to communicate to, uh, to a lot of people. Thank you. Other questions, anyone? Okay. So uh, with that, we're ready uh, for nominations. Don't everybody speak up at once. <laughs> I'll go. I, uh, I nominate Jason. OK, thank you, Randy. Is there a second for Jason? Oh, second. Uh, I would nominate um, Sky. Is there a second for Sky? You guys are tough. <laughs> Other nominations. Yes, Phil. 
Nominate Victor. Is there a second for Victor? I'll second that. Okay, thank you, Randy. Other nominations? I would nominate Sarah. And is there a second for Sarah? Phil. A second. So we have two, two candidates who have been moved and seconded and now we will vote. So I guess uh, ladies first, all those in favor of Sarah to be our uh, appointed select board person, please raise your hand. Aye. Thank you, Liz. And all those in favor of Victor, please raise your hand. Aye. Okay. So it looks like you're it, Victor. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Please. Thank you to everybody. Um, and, and thank you to, thank, yes. I just need to Sarah. vote. I couldn't see because I was taking minutes. So instead of uh, who raised their hand for Victor? I did. Randy and Phil. Randy, Peter, Phil. Randy, Peter, and Phil. Okay. And, uh, no. and only Liz for Sarah, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. So I, I sincerely mean it. I really appreciate all of your interest uh, in this position and your time and uh, your time and effort to do this. And I hope you will continue to be interested in the town and we are gonna have openings and other positions as time goes along. So anyway, thank you all very much. You're very and welcome I would to- like uh, to look also up. add a thank you, just to say that I think every single person that applied is highly qualified to either do the job or learn the job. I think everyone brings um, a great and different skill set. I think Vic's going to be a great select board person. And so I just want you all to know, too, that there are other opportunities where, you know, you really can make a difference and that may even be more interesting than the select board, such as, you know, the um, town planning, um, things that, you know, you can really, you know, dig your, your heels into. And so please don't look at this as, Oh, I'm, not, I'm never going to run again because I think it's really important that we have this kind of democracy and that we have people who are interested in helping lead the town and that there definitely will be other opportunities. I think to follow up on that, Liz, is, is that, um, you know, the participation in these meetings is extreme, extremely important. So even I if you're not- Randy. Oh, that's me. Is that me? Yes, me. So even if you're not part of the the official select board, I would encourage all to attend. Um, uh, I can speak from firsthand experience that uh, you know I attended these meetings prior to being on the board for well over a year and um, was given many opportunities to voice my opinion. Um, so I would encourage everyone to continue to attend. Thank you, Randy. Absolutely. <clears throat> Okay, guys. Thanks. Thanks again very much, and you're you're welcome to uh, to stay. Sarah, you had something. Yes. Yeah, so if if Vic is going to stay as the select board member right now, he needs to take the uh, Vermont oath of office. So, Victor, how are we going to do that? Can you read it to him? I can read Dr. it to him. Ward, thanks. Thanks, guys. Congrats, Victor. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, hold on to right back. You, it's Jason. easier for me to treat it. Randy, I'm going to come up and get those orders if you're done. I'm yeah. not, but yes, uh, feel free because I can stay after. Well, okay, Vic, all you need to do is just come into the office. But if you're going to, uh, if you're going to do this right, if you're going to be part of the meeting as a select board member, you got to raise your hand. Where is he? Where do you go? He's right here. I can't see him. Okay. He's got his hand up. Okay, Vic, just repeat after me. I, Vic Dwyer. I, Vic Dwyer, do solemnly swear or affirm, do solemnly swear or affirm, that I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont, I will be true and faithful to the state of Vermont, and that I will not directly or indirectly do any act or thing injurious to the Constitution or government thereof. Can you do that a little bit slower? I'm sorry. <laughs> you, all right. And that I will not directly or indirectly, I will not directly or indirectly, 
Do any act or thing injurious to the Constitution. Do any act or thing injurious to the Constitution. Instead, injurious to the Constitution. Right, or government thereof. Or government thereof. So help me God. So help me God. Under pains and penalties of perjury. Oh. Under pains and penalties of perjury. All right, that should do it. And then I'll leave the oath here and we can notarize it. So, but it's now witnessed by everyone. So I think you're good. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Again, welcome, Victor. So uh, we're already a little behind schedule, but I thought that was a good process and I wanted everybody to have an opportunity to speak. So uh, I thought that was good. Oh, my papers are blowing away here. Bear with me, sir. Um, okay. Uh, considering the listers' request to correct the 2022 grand list due to errors and omissions, RE parcels in the Owen Ward subdivision and the Menage subdivision action likely. So is this Annette who is presenting this? Who's presenting this, Sarah? Um, let me just, uh, I'm going to unmute her. Uh, it is going to be Annette and Shelley. I believe both Annette and Shelley are, are here. Okay, yep. Um, Nanette's video is muted right now, so I'm just asking her to unmute. Yep. Um, I, I thought I, I unmuted me. Okay, good. You're unmuted. Okay, good. She's still showing up muted on my screen. But she spoke. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I think she's okay now. And there's Shelly. Shelly, you can speak. Yeah, I, I think I'm already unmuted also. Good. Okay, ladies, you're up. I'm just going to readmit them. Here comes Annette. She's coming back again. Well, this is Shelly. My understanding is some of these errors were done um, prior to us being on board, and they were mm -hmm. found by Sarah when someone came into the town office looking for um, direction on a parcel ID. Yep. And so with the help of the consultant, they, they were fixed. Okay. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is that. Yeah. So um, we're talking about the um, Minaj property and the, and the Christopher Mina, uh, Amanti property. They come out to be exactly the same. Um, um, Christopher Amanti was charged the entire thing in Minaj had a, um, a little, um, a little piece of that. So it comes out to 271 uh, for the Menage property and five, uh, 455, 800 for the Christopher Monty property, which is. So just to be, just to be clear, my, under, my understanding of this is that there were two, two small parcels which were subdivided which weren't recognized when the grand list was created so this is recognizing the subdivision and properly uh properly including in the grand list the value for both properties but it doesn't change the overall value and doesn't change the grand list is that correct thank since I, i'm only speaking for do you mind if i speak because only because I have a better internet connection than Annette and uh, okay. Shelly. Yeah, so just be, so the first one, the first issue that you've got is the uh, WJH Realty property at the end of Leland Farm Road, which was also known as the Owen Ward subdivision. And Shelly was right; mm -hmm. this error happened before their time. There was uh, there were four lots sold from that subdivision uh, in the in the recent appraisal year. And unfortunately, the larger lot, which was, was retained by the owner of WJH Realty, Mark Hannon, um, did not somehow ended up in the possession of his a neighbor who had 3.46 acres, and he ended up getting 49.52, and the owner of, of the larger lot, who had 45 acres, didn't appear on the grand list. So that error was caught, and, the, and by separating those two in a perfect and properly attributing the 45 acre lot or so to WJH Realty, that is solved. The other issue is um, there was a misread, it seems, of not again, not our listers, but there was a misread of the subdivision of uh, Menashe up on South Bear Swamp Road, 
where the, the entitled the total acreage of 395.96 or 0.97 acres was transferred to the Amantes when actually 5.97 acres was retained by Menashe. So that needs to be corrected. And those are the those are the two issues. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. So I am correct that this does not affect the grand list, the total of the grand list. You can ask the slicks, the listers that. Shelly. The corrections have been made, but it's, so it should not affect the grand list, but it will affect the property taxes, if I understand it correctly. So this needs to be resolved so that when the property taxes go out, they go out correctly. Okay. Oh, no. Exactly. Exactly right. Okay. Thank you. So is there a motion to approve these two uh, corrections to the grand list? Liz? Yeah, I move it. Bill, you'll second? Okay. All those in favor of correcting these two uh, errors to our grand list, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. We have okay, just you guys need to sign that when you come down to sign things as well. I'll leave you notes. Okay, thank you. And okay. Shelly, Dorinda, your big is moment. That here, is that here? My big tonight, moment, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, thank you for thank you for sending out those sheets. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, yes, yeah, so I sent you the breakdown when I sent all the paperwork, but um, uh, just before the meeting, Peter called and asked to send the backup sheets with it, which I thought I probably did. But um, the only thing, the backup sheets, they don't tell you from sheet to sheet. It doesn't tell you any different information regarding values or anything like that. It's just I went in and changed the tax rate by a penny for each different one. And then it showed me how much money we are raising for that. And um, so the it, nothing changes above the bottom where it's the rate it's shown. Um, so the first one you have is basically what we need to cover as budgeted. Um, and then the next two that I, um, number two and number three, that's adding a penny to each, to the tax rate. Um, and one of them will raise, uh, basically every penny raises $23,777. Um, in looking at, um, the cost of inflation, just what I've seen come through in bills since January. Um, and most of it, again, have been related, not just to highway, but certainly those have taken the biggest effect. Um, but uh, the cost increase for heating fuel, everything is just jumped substantially. And I know that we did not built into the budget, these kind of significant increases. Um, so I am very concerned by just going with a break even. Um, I don't have the final numbers of where we're coming out this year, um, but I do think that we might be like right, almost a break even for the end of year, which is very good. Um, well, it surprised me. That's a big it's victory, a victory. Compared to where we yeah. thought we were going to be. Yeah, yeah it will. If it's over, it won't be over by a lot. But um, we have a few more adjustments to make, and then we'll be able to get you the numbers. Um, so I am recommending no less than option number three. That will give us, if we put, um, say, 4% on what our budget was, you're talking $60,000. This would raise forty-seven thousand, um, and still would keep, you know, uh, savings to the taxpayer. Also, um, last year we did level fund, and the taxes went down um, for people once again due to the education rate. So this is the perfect opportunity to um, be able to make up this shortfall that we think we're going to have. 
Thank you. So I have just a couple of quick thoughts on this. Um, and I agree with everything Dorinda said. I'm scared to death about, you know, what the actual, what the actual cost of things is going to be. I mean, we're not even, uh, you know, three weeks, three weeks into the new, uh, into the new year. So it's, it's pretty scary. So for me, it's a choice between, it's a choice between three and three and four. Um, and I hate paying taxes, as you all know, but I want the town to be fiscally sound. Um, the other comment I have is historically, and uh, this year might be the exception, or if it isn't the exception, it's going to be it's going to be very close. We underspend uh, our budget, and that has helped us out over the years. Uh, this past year, we did not. So I don't know whether I don't know whether that's going to be the case going forward or not. But it's something to think about. Um, Peter, when you say option number four, are you talking about increasing another penny? I see. Well, I see option cents, another three cents. A total of three cents added. Okay. So option one is option one is even Stephen. Option two adds a penny. Option three adds two cents and option four uh, is three cents. So the, what, we, what we are left with is option two, as Dorinda said, gives us a cushion of $23,777, option three, 47,149, and option four, 70,726. Uh, when we're talking about a million five oh three four oh eight. um you know, $70,000 or $47,000 doesn't sound like a lot of money. And as Dorinda says in her last thing, if inflation really tracks at, at 4% and some of the things we pay seem to be way more than 4%, um, we're going to be 60,000 over. So that puts us right between the, right between option four and option three. Peter, yes. I did not, I, and Dorinda's, all I got is one, two, and three. There's no four in that attachment. I, I said I didn't run a sheet four. I just said that's okay, how okay. much it would right. raise. Right. Can I ask a question, um, Dorinda? Do you know, what is it that we're going to have to, because, you know, rates for borrowing are going to probably be going up as well. So what do we have on the docket for, um, borrowing in terms of like trucks and things like that? Well, right now, the only thing on, schedule is um the truck that will be due in in the next um few weeks um so I, and i've contacted the bank but they have not gotten back to me with a rate yet um but the other thing is is you know i think there's other things that are um that are going to come up that may not have been budgeted for um and i we saw the salt budget just in the last um, the last two bills increase significantly. Um, heating is like through the roof. Um, certainly, we know diesel is right there. Um, so I just think that we, you know, even though I think when the budget was put together, we kind of all built something into it within the departments, but by no means do I think. You know, and I heard that health insurance is going to take a substantial um, big increase. Big hit. Big hit. And we pay for six months of health insurance before we hit a new budget. So, right. The other, the other two things I've been thinking about is I'm scared about the cost of our paving project. I mean, we're not, we're not going to know until I actually do it what the, what the cost of the, of the material is, but it's going up like a skyrocket. So we could we could easily uh, need extra money to cover that. Um, yeah. Well, uh, the, to that one, there's two paving projects in the work, and if we use up all the funds for um, the first one, there's nothing left for the second one. Right. Right. Um, Absolutely, absolutely correct. Um, I have something else I wanted to say, and it just 
flew out of my uh, flew out of my out of my mind. So we are not, we are not considering any any contribution from fund balance, right? Well, the fund balance is I don't think everybody has a clear understanding of the fund balance. You're using the fund balance every time you have a shortfall in the budget. So if we come in overspent, that money is being used out of the fund balance. Right. Um, so, Because anything left over at the end of the year goes to the bottom line. And last year we did not, we were over budget. I think, um, I don't remember the exact number, but we were over budget last year. Um, so that came out of the fund balance. The other thing is we use the fund balance to as a cash flow. And we have not, as long as I've been on, we have never had to go out and borrow to pay our bills in anticipation of taxes yeah. um, coming in. The other thing that doesn't happen, anybody who doesn't pay their taxes, we're still on the hook for paying the school portion. So that is our floater. And I hate to bring that down to zero, but it doesn't do any good to say we're gonna take $40,000 out of the fund balance. You're just better off overspending your budget. <laughs> because oh, no, it's coming out of the budget, you know. I don't disagree over. at all. What, what is, I mean, we, when we were talking about this a while ago, we weren't sure what the fund balance currently is. You have a rough idea what it is? I only have it from when we do the audit because it's a very convoluted thing to figure out because you have to take each, every dollar that we have and how it's allocated. And so when the audit was done last year, there was $147,000 in yeah. the fund balance. That's and I believe we also used, it, this money has also been um, used to pay you know, like the addition, we were comfortable in making the addition in the wages and things because we knew yeah. how we had this money to back us up. Um, yeah. So I just think that, um, you know, I hate to talk about anything to do with the fund balance, to be honest with yeah. you. All right, I just, I, that was my memory is that that was about where it, where it was. Um, so I'm really, I'm really hovering between three and four in terms of where I think we should be. I think I think one and two are too skinny. I would support I four know. myself. I, mean, I can't. I mean, how can we project? I read all these articles in the Wall Street Journal and here, there, and everywhere about what they think inflation is going to be, and the numbers are all over the place. So, I would be supportive of option number four. I'm sorry. Who is that? Liz, I'm going to turn off your volume. Turn it off. Oh, that's better. Okay. Yeah, I'm in favor of option number four. Okay. Phil, you had a comment? Yeah, I, I, um, I agree with you, Peter, that I think three is the minimum, but considering four, um, really should be on the table. I'm, I'm definitely afraid of what inflation could possibly do. It continues to, to be high and uh, you, certainly all of the things, you know, heating oil, gas, uh, like is salt in the past. And, and with the possibility of huge increases in health insurance, I mean, almost daily we're reading about UVM and how much they're gonna ask for, for, for increases. So, um, I think we're staring at that pretty significant inflation right away. So I think I'd actually be in favor of four. Randy, any thoughts? I, I wholeheartedly support number four. I think that that gets us back to a point where we're basically looking at the break even by the time you factor in inflation. Yeah, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's right. It's scary, but I'm afraid that's right. Well, the, res the, the residential rate will still have a savings to, you know, the taxpayers. It'll be, you know, a small one, but it certainly will be a savings. It's yeah, it's almost two cents, right? Yeah, yeah. it would be one point six nine. Um, it would be the non homestead that would be, you know, almost two cents over. On on their rate, so you know, increase. 
So Peter, you hold your hand up. Yep. I'm gonna. So for the other, for the benefit of the other board members, I'm gonna buy a floodlight for Victor, so he isn't the man in the dark. I got one. I have one. It still doesn't work. So There's too much light behind me. But anyway, what? One more time for the uh, for the newbie. Uh, what's the difference between three and four and money wise? One cent. It's it's like twenty three thousand five hundred dollars, Victor, in additional revenue uh, for the one I, cent extra. I'd be uh, I would be in favor of option four. Okay. Who would like to make a motion? I'll make that motion to support okay. option number four. Okay. Is there a second? All second. No. Thank you. No. I need I need a motion with the actual municipal tax rate. Okay, sorry. Hold on, let me read it. Um, okay, um, we'll have to figure that out. Um, so if I look at the option for number three, Dorinda, uh, yeah. and the tax the tax rate for that would be. Uh, you should do the first the municipal, then you can add it together with the education. For both homes, homestead and non homestead. Right. So okay. the town rate would be 0. 0.5921. 0. 0.5921. Yeah. And the local agreement would be 0. 0.0024. 0. 0.0024. Yeah. So I come up with 0. 0.5945 between the two. Um, point, point five, nine, four, five. Right. But that's between, for both the local, that includes local agreement and town. So I'm sorry, it's point five, nine, four, five. Point five, five nine, two, one for the town. Right. And point zero, zero, two, four for the local agreement. So that's five, nine, four, five. Yes. Okay, thank you. Good job on that motion, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> I even wrote it down just in case Sarah made me repeat it. <laughs> there you go. Good job. So Randy moved, Phil seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Five nine point five nine four five. Okay. Okay, thank you, Dorinda, for the work you do on that. No problem. I appreciate it very much. I remember a lot of a lot of long evenings with us all staring at those sheets trying to figure out what we were doing. You make it easy for us. So <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Hold on. Hey, can I ask one question, Dorinda? Yes. What how much is each penny raised? Each penny raised is twenty three thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollars. Thank you. Uh, Five hundred and seventy seven. The sheet that I have says. Oh really? I had seven seventy seven, but I don't know. Wait a minute. No, um, where did you yeah, get it off? Got it. You got it. A number Option two. Option number two says. for the penny twenty three thousand five hundred and seventy seven dollars and twelve cents. Okay. Thank you. Must have been a typo on my cover sheet. Um. Thank you, one and all. Anything else for your treasurer's report, Dorinda? Um, that was setting the tax rate. Just on the treasurer report, as I said earlier, um, I was hoping to get a updated budget status to you. Hopefully, by the next meeting, we'll be able to do that. Um, there's a couple of um, reclassing of some things that are in the wrong pot that needs to get put into a different pot. But it's, you know, so, and it'll, I think it'll help. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is I reached out to Borns um, a couple weeks ago uh, because of uh, the propane price to see what we could lock it in for. Um, and uh, also diesel. They won't lock in diesel because it's so volatile. 
Um, they're saying that we pay, um, it's their cost with a fixed differential of 18 cents a gallon. So I don't know if there's, and I didn't go out to anybody else. This is where I started because I don't know how the board feels about locking in prices on anything. Um, but they did give me a lock-in price on um, propane that you can lock it in for a year or two years at a fixed rate of 1.986. I do know there's other people out there. I kind of thought that was on the high side, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, I'm not an expert in the propane department. Um, I do know last year we paid, we started out at $1.48 a gallon and we paid as much as $2.27 a gallon. Yeah. The scary thing right now is, and as, as you've all heard me say in the past, I buy a lot of fuel oil. I don't buy much diesel, but I buy a lot of fuel oil and I buy a lot of propane. And uh, we've been trying to figure out what to do. And our decision for us was we were not going to lock in at this time. I mean, the last month rates have started coming down. Okay. Um, you know, who knows, who knows what's going to happen, but I don't see, I don't see any overwhelming benefit myself in locking in unless somebody's offering an unbelievable deal. And that doesn't sound to me like an unbelievable deal. No, it didn't to me, but I, and I didn't want to pursue it any further until I really felt to see how the board felt about, you know, making any changes. So, so is the cost plus arrangement for both the diesel and the propane? No. Just the diesel. And they wouldn't offer the cost plus for the propane? He just gave me a locked-in rate. And, you know, with propane, they're not the only, I mean, with the, both of them, they're not the only people in, available to do it, you know. I, no. But I, I don't want to put time into it if we really feel that we might have a chance of not, you know, the cost coming down and not having to lock into it. I'm afraid, I mean, I, I called around all over the place uh, last month and I got crazy numbers all over the place, but they were all crazy high as far as I was concerned. So uh, again, my decision for myself or our decision for ourselves was that we weren't gonna lock in either the propane or the fuel oil, which fuel oil is relatively similar to diesel if you ignore the tax business. But I don't know how others, I don't know how others feel. I think for my, for my personal situation, I probably wouldn't lock in either. Um, I think one good thing to know would be, and, and I think we have some information available to us, but grabbing the, the overall usage amounts and maybe shopping around a little bit. Um, I don't know how long we've been with Borns, but I don't think shopping around is a bad idea. I don't, I don't think it is either, Randy. All, all I would tell you is that, you know, there's always some outrider who promises a lower rate, but unless you, unless they're willing to lock it in at a lower rate, who knows what you're going to get, you know, and they're not willing to lock it in at a lower rate, in my experience. Yeah. I think in this market, if we it, doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt to pick up the phone and, and, uh, and, and make some phone calls and see what the response is. Yeah, I think in this market, if you're if you're able to get a cost plus deal where you know that, you know, you may be able to fluctuate as the market comes down, which I don't know, I, I believe it's going to in the future. Um, I think that's that's where my head would be at. What what I've been able to do in the past, but I wasn't able to do this year, is get a similar to what Dorinda talked about. Uh, a, a fixed price above the rack price. In other words, you know, they buy the they buy the diesel or the propane at the terminal, whatever it is, and that's the price that floats, and that's the big number. But the eighteen cents or whatever it is can be locked in. But I don't know how much benefit that is. You said it was a dollar ninety eight six per gallon of propane. He what he would lock it in at was. 1.986. No. So, as the differ in terms of uh, 
you know, like municipal costs versus like whole costs. Liz, are, are you able to, to use I'm your a really hard computer time mic? Here. Okay. I'm going to have to go someplace else. Or Liz, I'm going to have to send you to the other room. You're on mute, Liz. Yeah, we can't hear you. I'm going to go into like half. How about now? Now we can. Oh, yeah. You can't hear me. Yeah, they can hear you. Yeah, I can't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I just I'd actually. Now, can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Okay, I can't hear you, but my question. Oh. I think now, now talk to me. Now. How about now? That, yeah, I can hear you. Crank up your volume, Liz. Okay. Okay. My volume. That seems really There you go. Know. Much better. Okay. So my question is how um how much does municipal propane differ in terms of like the cost of that I pay for propane, for example? Is it a big saving? I think it probably goes by gallons and not so much by whether you're a municipality or a business or what. It's your usage most of the time. Okay, yeah, so they're giving you a 1.9 based on your yeah. usage, probably. I'm assuming. That, I mean, they didn't say. I mean, it's a company we deal with, so they didn't ask me mm -hmm. how much I used or anything. I just called them up and asked them, right. you know, what a, a fixed rate would be, and that's what they came back with. How well, much use, do they? How much do we use generally in propane? Do you know? Well, last year we used sixty five hundred gallons. And do you know what the cost per gallon was then? It ranged between a dollar forty eight and two twenty seven. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, okay, so it's like thirteen thousand dollars versus. Fourteen thousand. Yeah, I mean, here's what I would suggest, guys. Um, Dorinda, if you could take a, a few minutes or maybe an hour and and call three or four of the reputable people around and just see what they have to say. I mean, there's no reason we have to do anything tonight. That's for sure. And just see what they're saying. Would that be a problem? No, no, it could be done. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have then we'll have a little more uh, a little more information. So Good question: Have we ever locked in? Like, have we ever done yes. that? We have. Yes. Okay, so it's really more about right now with the volatility. Yeah. Does it make sense? Okay. Right. In the past, in the in the past, I think for the most part we have locked in. We well, haven't. Since, done. Not since I've been here, we haven't. Really, we haven't locked in since you've been. No. Nope. That's interesting. Nope. Okay. I get confused between my own business and the town's business. I, I don't recall it being locked in, but, you know, again, that's been the last, I know I've got three years worth of records and it was a different price at every delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hope it continues to trend down. How about that? So, We'll have uh, we'll have some further discussion on this at the next meeting. And if anybody has any any thoughts or ideas, let uh, let Dorinda know. Anything else, Dorinda? No, nope, that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Middlesex Route Two and Riverwalk scoping study update uh, and presentation of final walkable Middlesex scoping study, select board endorsement of final scoping study action likely. Thanks, I will just kick this off. This is Sandy Levine, um, because I also noticed this starting at six o'clock for a planning commission meeting in case there was a quorum of the planning commission. There doesn't appear to be, so I will um, open the meeting for the planning commission and acknowledge that there's no quorum. There's just myself and Mitch who is here. And then, um, 
with that, uh, Dayton Kreitz, who's worked with us on the scoping study, is here, and he can do the presentation for the, the select board. And um, the, what we would be looking for, for the, from the select board is at the end of this to endorse um, the final study. It, it, it is a study. Um, it's helpful in moving forward any um, VTRANS project that might go be, be involved with, with Route 2, and it, it just shows to VTRANS and others um, within the state or for any um, funding we might seek for this that it is um, endorsed by the town. The Planning Commission will do the same as well. So I will turn it over to Dayton Kreitz. Thank you, Sandy. Welcome, um, thank you for coming. Oh, no, thank you for having me. I'll keep this to a, hopefully kind of a, just a quick overview of the uh, study and people can dig into it further at their own uh, leisure. I'll share my screen if I can, as that should hopefully give some simple graphic aid here. But yeah, we've wrapped up the, um, the scoping study, which I think really looks at in, in greater detail a way to build a walkable village center that is supported by residents right there in the village and in the broader Middlesex community. Um, and long report, I won't bore you with every single detail, but I think suffice it to say that this document's built off of a whole host of previous planning work. You know, we always stand on the shoulders of giants in these efforts, um, you know, ranging all the way back to a 2001 village plan that identified a need for walkable uh, facilities in the village center. You've had so much growth and so much activity starting to happen in your village center. But this continues to get echoed in the 2019 plan, the village center designation, and a more broad study that preceded this uh, that we assisted with that came in 2020. And so what this one really dives into is the nuts and bolts of how this is going to get done and continued sort of proof both of the real need for this from a safety perspective on a state highway that is the main street of your village, um, as well as clear public support. And to really hone in on those points, you know, we document a lot of things in this report um, to give that good background. This report also includes sort of a broad overview of the potential to connect the village via some sort of trail up to Walter Kelly Park, although that's not really the main focus. I just want to mention that is included in this report. Um, we look at things of, you know, the details of exactly how the road is built. And I think this, these images really point out that a two foot wide shoulder at best is really what people have to walk on. And that's, you know, that's clearly not enough. Um, we, we document the in this, this the Central Vermont Regional Planning uh, Council was, was working with us on this and conducted speed, a speed study. And I think one of the most sort of frightening things about it is that it documents uh, last, uh, last season that we had a 85th percentile speed of 57.3 miles an hour entering the village from the west. Um, again, a good document to have on hand to if VTrans or anyone else says, I don't think there's a safety hazard you've got some pretty clear arguments to the contrary. It also documents that um, the village in every aspect meets warrant for a pedestrian crossing. Um, and, you know, as we have shown these pictures, a typical Friday night in the summer in the Middlesex village, there's pedestrians crossing, that's gonna happen. Um, so we go through and document those pieces. And then, you know, the other piece of this documents in depth is community support. And I wanna point out that we've had four, um, this, this effort, had four separate um, public meetings, two of which were in somewhat invite only because we wanted to hear directly from the residents in the village. Um, and so those first two meetings really focused on their concerns, their needs. We heard from the residents of Church Street that they want to, don't want, they love having camp meet nearby, but they don't want it really coming over onto Church Street. We heard that loud and clear, and this plan reflects that. Um, and then we had broader community forums that the first ones we heard, we got to had uh, over 140 responses. Um, and the key thing is that people felt unsafe walking or biking through the village center. Um, people want to see a walkable connection. Um, and there's generally positive support for that throughout. About 70% of the comments we received through the study have strong support for improvements to walkability in the village. Um, so, those are the those are the efforts that went through to sort of develop this. And when it really comes down to it, we proposed three nuanced uh, different ways that this could move forward. Um, we looked at one that was very similar to the 2020 study that creates um, streetscape improvements around sort of Camp Mead Center and Gallagher Road. 
and does a little bit at the Route 100 intersection. We worked at a version of that that only has the pedestrian crossing and sidewalks and doesn't do as much expansion um, of on-street parking and um, traffic calming elements into the roadway. And we looked at one that um, includes bike lanes through it. And in ranking those and discussing those with the public, um, with, we looked into greater detail on them. The preferred, the preferred design really wasn't any one of those three because this we don't design these studies to say, we've developed three options, you need to pick one. We say, we've developed three options, tell us what's good, tell us what's bad, and we'll build something better. And what came down as the um, preferred design is one that does have streetscape calming elements through that Camp Mead Center, but we also are trying to say we need, we need bicycle connectivity on here too. So it includes bike lanes, and we're calling for buffered bike lanes where possible um, that would provide a little bit more separation than just a layer of paint. Um, but that bike lane inclusion would have to shift the roadway. And so this preferred design sort of sees this as phases that would be worked with, with VTRANS on any future roadway improvements, because the roadway at this main curve west of Church Street and east of Camp Mead um, would have to move the roadway north um, just a little bit to accommodate the sidewalk and the bike lanes and the travel lanes um, as we need them. And that being said, Early, earlier phases of this, if you could work it out with the uh, state transportation agency, could just be the south side sidewalk that would connect all the way from Camp Mead over to Roots Market ahead of any other improvements and other pieces like traffic calming um, and road narrowing improvements around the Gallagher Road intersection can come later. Pieces like bike lanes and road alignment changes can also come later. So that's the preferred design. Um, you see here, this is probably a better detail of what we're looking at. Um, it's a five foot sidewalk on either side, um, on street parking, um, accompanied by a bulb out that surrounds pedestrian crossings to make a short and much safer pedestrian crossing right between what is effectively now the filling station um, and, and Camp Mead. Um, mountable curbs, uh, curb aprons at the Gallagher Road intersection, because we well know that uh, heavy trucks need to access that route. And connected sidewalk all connecting the filling station across Gallagher Road, and that's about where the northern sidewalk would end, whereas the southern sidewalk would continue, have small retaining walls um, all the way down to Church Street, have a pedestrian crossing at Church Street, um, and connect to Roots Market. And this is where you can see here, too, these little dots is where we're proposing um, a buffered bike lane, provide better bicycle connectivity east and west uh, through the Village Center. And we recognize as well in this project that um, what we're calling for is a deviation from some of the VTRANS standards that they often apply to their highways. Um, and we think that's absolutely appropriate given the context of a village center and all the safety and traffic speed elements that we've documented in this study. Um, so that's a really quick flash through. I don't wanna to take too much of, of your important time, but I wanna leave more time for questions and diving into any details that you had, but I think what, what we leave you with here, I think is a really important document to have in hand when VTRANS comes knocking at the door and saying, hey, we need to do updates to Route 2, right? We have a document in hand that we can take directly to them and say that you know, VTRANS bike ped coordinator has reviewed this. Here's the, here's the design alternative that's supported by you know, multiple rounds of public engagement. Over 143 people participated in uh, responses to this study. We've documented a need for pedestrian crossing. We've documented safety needs and the high speeds of traffic. Here's a great opportunity to make Middlesex walkable and make our state highway systems work for everybody. So that's literally it. We've got an implementation chapter in the back that kind of walks through some of those next steps, an overview of those permits that would be required for any future efforts. And then you know, detailed appendices for when you can't sleep at night, you could read all about each one of the public meetings, the speed study data, a full cost estimate of the preferred design, concept and the archaeological resource assessment. So that is a very fast summary of the study, and we're proud to hand it over to you now. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have, or if there's something I glossed over that you'd like more detail, just ask. So, Sandy, um, what happens next with this? What happens next is, well, hopefully the select board and the planning commission will endorse this. That will sort of have the stamp from the town. And it, you know, if there is funding that comes up to be available to implement some of this, we could try and do that as the town of Middlesex. 
Realistically, I think what happens next is when VTrans does their next project to work on this section of Route 2, which I've heard is coming up in the next five years or so, we will hopefully be able to work with them to implement and make hopefully all of these pieces, if not most of these pieces. And it will at that point have the endorsement of the town to do it. So this gets submitted to VTrans? It doesn't get submitted to VTrans. Um, it, it's something that we keep, that we've been keeping them in the loop along the way. They've, they've seen it. Um, we would have it in hand when they come to us to talk about um, work they want to do or would plan to do along Route 2. Okay, thank you. I, if the town wanted to, they could say, we want to do all of this right now. Um, that I can't see the town of Middlesex taking on a one point something million dollar road project right now. But if that's what the select board wanted to do, you could. Yeah. No, I think I think the discussion all of all along has been to make any significant progress on this. We've got to find some outside funding somewhere, some grant money. Yeah. Right. And you know there may be other grant money that becomes available, and we're certainly keeping our eyes and ears open for that. And having this scoping study, which is you know the next step that anybody would would need to do before you do construction, it makes a project like this that much closer to being shovel ready to get off the ground and go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions, board members. I've got one. Um, just looking at the proposed design. Um, I'm curious what kind of thought was put into, um, you know, the main, the maintenance needs of, of, you know, plowing sidewalks, right. the, the on-site park or on-street parking for cars. I'm imagining that VTrans, so right now VTrans goes through and plows all that, right? Um, I'm imagining that that shifts the burden over to the town. So it, it would likely do something in that sort if this was built as proposed. Um, and the, the, plowing, the plowing burden, in essence, there's a couple of ways we, we like to look at this, is that um, there are towns and places in Vermont and beyond that sidewalk plowing is purely the responsibility of the landowner. And if you work out you know, sort of the shared responsibility there, the town wouldn't necessarily have to plow sidewalks. The other point being that sidewalks that are available to the to the walking public, um, you know, seven months a year is a whole lot better than sidewalks that are available zero months a year. So we see that element as sort of an improvement um, that could be done sort of in stages before trying to put that plowing responsibility on the town. And as for the narrower um, traffic calming elements in there, that is something that would have to be a discussion with VTrans. Um, but there's been a lot of discussion in other communities as well that if they can get these traffic calming improvements in, town plows have to drive this corridor anyway. And that might be one of the discussions that VTrans would need to have with a community to say, we can give you these traffic calming improvements, but we need, but we need you to do the plowing of the main road. That could, that could be, but that's all a conversation sort of down the road. And it was something we thought about a lot, but that's the real trade-off. If you design, if you design a village street around large highway plows you get a large highway with sidewalks on the side of it. But if you want to design for a village, um, there's a little bit of that narrowing that is important. Does that answer your questions, Mr. Drury? It, it, it does. Uh, it doesn't alleviate the concerns, but it answers the question. All right. You know, I, I, I also wouldn't say, I wouldn't, say it's out of the question for VTrans to do the plowing here. The, the width of the roadways uh, lanes um, is no different than what's existing now. Um, if VTrans plows that area now with, with less than 14 feet width in, in other sections through Middlesex. Um, but that said, I think there would be pushback from VTrans because it would be a, a narrower roadway. Yeah, and it's just not, it's not just the narrower roadway, it's, it's in and out of all of the, uh, the parking spots and, and the cleanup that's needed. Uh, you know, I think about what I see when I go to Barry, um, when I travel to work and whatnot, and uh, it's a considerable effort to not just plow the traveled lanes, but then to clean up all of the parking spaces. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what you're getting there, there may be to is, I'm sorry, yeah, what it comes down to is potentially having, you know, parking bans so the the parking spaces can be plowed at night. And, you know, we've all seen what goes on in Barry and Montpelier and Burlington, how they cope with some degree of success with the snow and some degree of failure. <laughs> well, it just be added the she the sheer impact to the town highway budget to to deal with that one this one piece of it you know i just want to make sure that we're not missing um that piece of the conversation right i mean well, the there could thing, also the be this, guys as we as we work our way through this process we're going to have a lot of time to consider all this stuff and figure out how it's going to happen and negotiate with vtrans and you know yeah. this is a, this is a step but not a final step by any stretch Absolutely. I was just to say there could also be public private partnerships. You've got by and large one landowner at the moment where most of that areas are and they've got snow plows. There might be able to be an arrangement for them to do it. And frankly, the safety risk of having cars going 50 miles an hour in front of our major businesses in town. I you can't put a price on that it, um, you know, with people walking and bicycling and crossing the roadway there. And I think that's an important consideration as well. I'll have to agree that I was just at Roots and trying to pull out and so many people just racing by. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this is like a really busy intersection because it's people coming off to go to the Mad River in the in the summer and in the winter. Um, Sandy, I have a question. Did you um, like, have you started to investigate, you know, the um, the bridges and roads infrastructure bill to see if there's funding to help um with with this particular project and i also wonder you know would this be a competing project potentially with you know other needs in the town um you know especially around our our dirt roads and the need to um look at you know potentially resurfacing areas of you know really bad mud areas and i don't know that's just something to think about as we're you know looking into this and and how do we um sort of yeah triage it I mean, I think we need to make sure we're not competing with the other, you know, very important needs within the town. We've sort of viewed this as, again, standalone. VTrans at some point is going to be doing work on Route 2 when they do that. Let's try and get this done. And in the meantime, if something else comes up and the something else that would come up would be more in, along the lines of um, funding available for downtown revitalization. That's not available for fixing the back dirt roads. That would right. only be available for the village. Peter, yes. There's some grants out through Ross Gowan uh, from the Agency of Transportation for uh, for that type of uh, work um, right now. At least they were advertising it through through the Agency of Transportation and uh, Vermont Local Roads uh, last week. And. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I've, I've been in conversation with some people uh, that uh, that uh, are, you know are with the state AOT as far as plowing uh, and stuff, and uh, I think, which is not a bad thing, this isn't a deal breaker, but I think they'd stop plowing right at uh, Middlesex State Highway and they uh, as far as on Route Two, and they would pick it up the other side of town. So. Uh, we would probably uh, the town of Middlesex would uh, would be plowing uh, from basically uh, Middlesex State Highway out through to uh, Route 100 B. Hmm. That's my understanding. So it's interesting, and just because I go back and forth through Moortown all the time in the winter time, going down to Sugarbush. Yeah. You know, they, they redid their their roads and sidewalks. They don't have they don't have on street parking, but uh, the state definitely plows right down through Moortown. Because they don't have on street parking. Yeah. So that's one of the things I wonder is if we if we if there's some way to create and this is just something to look at, some way to create more more off street parking and not have the on street parking and that solves the that solves the uh, the plowing problem. I mean, certainly in the summertime when it's busy, people are going to park on the edge of the road, but uh, it isn't the same thing as having on street parking. I don't know. All the things to talk about and think about as we go uh, as we go forward. I think what we need 
to do tonight is uh, approve this study and add it to our portfolio of work for future uh, for future consideration. And uh, David, right thank you very much for your uh, for your work on this. Thank you. Um, and your presentation tonight was helpful. Thank you. So is someone is someone willing to make that motion? Can yes. I ask a question first? So sure. is this going to cost us any money out of, uh, you know, if we go forward with this third portion of the study? The, study, the study's completed and it's already okay. paid, it's already paid for. There's nothing else to do with this. This work is now okay. done. Um, okay. Whatever else we decide to do will likely cost some amount of money, depending on if VTrans does it all or if the town takes okay. does some of it. Well, we're all set for this year, then, is what yeah, you're we're saying. Not, we're not, by approval, okay. we're not spending any money. I just wanted to check on that. Okay. No, oh, that's, it's, that's, that's good. It's my understanding that endorsing this tonight essentially says that the select board's interested in, in reviewing the future potential of this mm -hmm. should VTrans come through and do uh, work at that point in time. Or grant money become available. Who knows? You know, who right. Knows? But it's not yeah. it's not locking us into anything. It's just no. leaving the possible it's just leaving the possibilities open for for future uh, exploration. That's correct. We're not we're not committing to uh, anything at this point in time. Yeah, I I agree with you all that the safety you know safety plays a big role. Um, I you know obviously everybody probably picks up that my concerns are really the the added duties and the added fiscal uh, obligations that it imposes on the town. Um, but uh, yeah, so as long as we, as long as it's just to uh, say. Yeah, if if everything worked out, then then this looks okay, and it doesn't lock us into anything. Then, sure. Is that a motion, Randy? Uh, I don't want to make the motion. No. I'll, I'll make the motion that the select board um, endorses the uh, Middlesex Route Two and Riverwalk uh, final scoping study. Um, is that the motion that we're endorsing it? Yep. Okay. Yep. Is there awesome. a second to that motion? I so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, it's been moved and seconded that the select board will approve the Route 2 and Riverwalk scoping study. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Randy, I didn't see you vote. I raised my hand for oh, you did? to, okay. to, to, you. to endorse sorry. it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so we've approved it. Thank you, Sandy. And uh, thank you, thank you Thanks, Sandy. Uh, update from the Planning Commission: Approving a letter to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission requesting review and approval of the updated town plan approved by the voters at the March 2022 town meeting. Action likely. Hi, Dayton. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. Thank you. This can be a, a rather quick update. I can put. I don't. I don't remember if I had given everybody an updated sort of table that I have of our projects. I just put it in the chat for folks to see. Um, there's not a lot of updates. We're finalizing our um, the, the zoning for the town. I expect we will vote on that and pass. We had a public hearing. We got some good feedback. The couple, you know, relatively minor tweaks that we need to make and address, which we will do and I expect we'll have that done next week and we're meeting next week. The next step is to pass that on to the select board. And I guess I'd like to know when the select board meets next, because I'd like to have some time for myself and Claire Rock with the Regional Planning Commission, who's been working with us on the zoning to be able to come and you know make a 15, 20 minute presentation to kind of walk through what's changed so we could so the select board can be informed about what's in the zoning and what's in the zoning update. Um, well, I, think we're meeting, I think we're meeting again next week because we uh, postponed this meeting because it would have normally been on the 5th of July, I believe. Okay, then when is your meeting? Right after? About that, Sarah, I think I am. Yeah, and then uh, well, I've got a feedback. Uh, this, the 2nd of August. Second, okay. Uh, We'll be on for August 2nd. I can't hear you. She'll be on for August 2nd. Okay. Well, yeah. And and we will be, we'll be able to pass it on to you before then. Um, but
but you'll the pre presentation would be for August 2nd and then you could put it out for notice you'll need to have a public hearing and um put it out if you want to put it out for vote that would have to be on the ballot by September okay Do you, so what you need from us tonight is oh then okay apart that that that's just the update for the zoning what the one the other the other piece is I learned from the regional planning commission that as part of the process of adopting a new town plan is for the regional planning commission to confirm that town plan um, to say that they've reviewed and they approve it and it's in line with sort of regional and state planning goals and so on and so forth. Um, and that gives the Middlesex town plan extra standing when it would be considered in any state proceeding. So in order for the Regional Planning Commission to do that, they need an actual letter from the select board asking them for that. I shared with Sarah just some draft language for that plan. And I guess what I would be looking for here is um, a vote from the select board that you would send a letter to the Regional Planning Commission asking, um, requesting approval of the town plan and energy plan that was passed by voters at March town meeting. Sounds good to me. Anyone willing to make that motion, Phil? Yeah, I'll move. Uh, what, uh, is it just approval of the? Yeah, it's just a, it's a letter requesting approval by the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Okay, so requesting approval by the Regional Planning Commission. Thank you. How about a second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Victor. Um, all those in favor of the town sending the letter, which we talked about in the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we've done it. You're all good, Sandy. Great, thanks so much. And Sarah, you have that le draft language. Do you need anything else from me? I can send it again. Uh, no. Uh, Liz, can you just turn that down? Yeah. Um, all I need is a um, just an authorization from the board to that Peter sign it or that's who, who should sign it or I can sign it, whatever. Just a, we just need the board to vote on that. Why don't you, why don't we have Sarah sign it on behalf of the board? Does that make sense? Okay. Do we need a motion on that? I don't think so. We're all in agreement. Everybody okay. nodded. <laughs> yeah, you're good to go, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Highway update. Eric, welcome. <laughs> no, How no. How are you doing? Wait a minute, you missed one. Oh. No. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Did. What did I miss? Yep. You, you missed. Um, is Mitch still here? We've got to rename those roads. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm here. I there he is. I apologize. I must be getting hungry and thirsty. Sorry. Okay, next. Hi there. Um, this will be fairly quick, actually. Um, I have three items, only one of which really needs action. One could take action. The other one, I don't think I want action just yet. Um, uh, I think it was probably in March I requested that you guys approve rename or naming a private driveway as Black Bear Way. And you did approve that, but it turns out the folks that lived in that road said, no, we really want it to be called Black Bear Hill. And I said, okay, but I checked with the post office in the re and the um, e Vermont E911 board. They both they said that's fine. And so now I would like you guys to <laughs> rename that road Black Bear Hill. <laughs> is there is there already a sign up there that says Black Bear Lane? Yes. They they pay for it though, don't they? Yeah, because it's, it's private. We don't pay for it. But you know what? Who's billing them? Because I don't think we were told to bill them. So who, you know, when we say they're paying for it, uh, I believe we paid the um, for the signs and who's billing them? I guess we're not. I guess we're not. <laughs> um, I haven't seen a, um, uh, I haven't seen a bill for a road sign. Have you guys? 
I thought I saw one come through um, from uh, who do we have do it? Some. Uh, we had Picard. We had Picard Lane, and then we had uh, this. And we should be sending. We should be turning around and sending that to those people to to, to for reimbursement. I'll Take check card. on that. I'll check on it tomorrow. I thought I saw something come through, and so the Picard Lane sign is up. So we definitely got the sign. We got the, yeah, the other question. one too. I thought. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely up. I've seen it coming down uh, no, from school. It, so the question is, who paid for it? We did. We ordered them. We paid for them. I'm quite sure the bill came through our office. I, I vaguely, I vaguely remember it. I'll double check it tomorrow. But well, we have to invoice them if they have to pay us back. The bill, the bill did come through to you. Uh, it Irene. did, didn't it? Yeah, that's it what did, I yeah. thought. But there yeah, was Charles, no Charles Felcher. Charles Felcher picked them up at. Uh, uh, Used to be L and D as traffic. Uh, it's mm -hmm. up by uh, it's up by UPS and FedEx on yep. the left. That's where it's, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. It's, it's something sign is what it's called. I don't remember exactly. Well, in, in the past, all we've done is just uh, all we've done is just had you know given them they've they've come through who the residents of the of the private drives have given us a, a check for eighty bucks to pay for it or whatever it costs. Okay. Okay, well, I'll check on that tomorrow. Hey, Mitch, was it a mistake that we made? No. I believe it was a miscommunication. So don't you fill out a form for that? Uh, I did not. I don't know if there is a form. I guess I took on this role right when COVID emerged and um, Rika retired and we never did catch up to do any training so i've been just okay i'm learning just proposing... on the fly and i haven't had a lot of road this is the first set of road names that have come through so i'm right. learning so i will take the blame the, the only thing stroke. i can imagine is a scenario where they say well we asked for black Bill bear hill we shouldn't have to pay for two signs right, <laughs> exactly. that out there. right. i i agree that it's would be good to have something in writing, and I did not realize there's a form. If there is, I will use it in the future. If there's not a form, I will get one made. So we have everything documented henceforth. But I think she's asking the question, who is this, this second sign on? Is it a, a Middlesex era, or was it a landowner era? Um. I will be happy to say it was a miscommunication and I'll take the heat for it. And if you need 80 bucks, I will pay 80 bucks. No, so, that, is, that isn't that is the yeah. point. It's just, we okay. need to know if we're billing for the second sign. If we get, if if they're not just changing their mind, I think is the question. I don't think, well, they asking. didn't think they changed their mind. They thought we miscommunicated about what the name was going to be. So I would bill yeah. for one. Okay, thank you. So I will make sure this doesn't happen again. Thank you, Mitch. And is there particular landowners? Who do we know who we built to? Um, there's three of them up there. There's well, two residents on that road. So somebody needs to figure out, you know, who the bill should go to. Uh, this. <laughs> I'll figure it out. It's not that hard. Yeah, You're going to split the bill? Under. You're going to split the bill between them? They do everything else that way. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't be surprised. That's what they would do with the sign. Okay, you got to plow it. Do you guys want to make a motion? What's the motion? To change the name. If it was an error, I don't think we need to make a motion. We just need to. But fix I would like error. to get it codified in the in the in the. Okay, make no, no. the motion, Liz. I'll move that we um, approve the name change to Black Bear Hill from Black Bear Lane <laughs> and that we uh, bill for one sign and assume it was an error on Middlesex's part. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we've taken care of Black Bear Hill. In terms of how we say Sunny Brook and how we say Lower Barnett. I did read uh, 
Patty. I did read Patty's Patty's letter. I think that for me settles the the Barnett thing. Mm -hmm. um, just grammatically, Sunny Space Brook makes more sense to me than Sunny Brook altogether. But yes, Sarah. Okay, so I did some research on this, and Ward Knapp remembers it's Sunny Brook, one word. And uh, Annette Halas, who's lived there since on Sunnybrook since 1976, says it's one word. And that's, uh, I went through as far as I could go back in the records. It has one, been one word. Somehow it got separated into two words, and I don't know how. So the sign now is two? The sign is one. That's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I what I would say real long. quickly is that in the case of both Barnett Hill and Upper and Lower Sunnybrook Road, um, Barnett Hill, the town signs currently are spelled with two T's, which is the correct spelling. Somehow the 911 board and the post office have spelled them Barnett with one T. So all I'm really looking for you is you guys to affirm that the correct spelling is Barnett with two T's and then I can get those guys to change their records. Phil's making and, the motion, I believe. Yeah, I'll um, make the motion that we affirm that uh, Barnett is spelled with two T's and that Sunnybrook is one word. And I guess that's it. And we inform the proper authorities. You're second, second it. You're nodding your head. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Okay, um, that's great. All in favor of the of the motion, Barnett with two T's and Sunnybrook one word. Say aye. 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 That hey, was a fun one. <laughs> Okay. Now, Thank you, everyone. Eric <laughs> and Victor, you're on. I'm sorry. Uh, so we, have a, we have a plethora of uh, things to discuss. Um, is Eric here? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you can explain the Kenworth truck if you want. Okay. So, um, Kenworth arrived at Tenco in New Hampshire uh, last week. Um, apparently, the ball was dropped from when Tenco moved from Barrie to New Hampshire. Uh, parts were never ordered, so now we don't have parts for the truck to make it a complete dump truck. Mm -hmm. uh, talking back and forth with Tenco, uh, they found a body. They found some parts. They're not exactly what we wanted. Um, but they can make it work. They're probably 30 to 45 days out before they can work on it. I then talked to uh, Viking. Uh, they can match the price um, and they can start on it as soon as July 18th. Hmm. So it's only one we're thing, at. one added thing. Yeah. Uh, the transmission, they didn't, they didn't realize, neither company realized that it was a manual transmission. And so how, we we couldn't hook to the front of the engine. We have to we have a special uh, on the back of the engine, right? On the hydraulics, right? Which is an added fifteen hundred dollars. An added fifteen hundred dollars, and if wow. we want, for seven hundred dollars, is it? We can get a uh, stainless steel uh, toolbox, and for if we chose to, yep. And then for another seven hundred, we can get a uh, spinner that moves left and or moves right uh, as you're sitting in the truck so you can spread sand underneath both wheels. Is that correct? Accurate? Correct. Yeah. Which is advantageous at some point. Yes. But anyway, so that's, where, that's where we're at. And so we're, we, need to, we need to make a decision if we want to switch over to Viking or not so that we can get moving on the truck. Um, can I just get a clarification about which truck this is that we're talking about? Is this the one that the brand new one? Brand the one that was that where I've ordered. Yes, correct. Right. Okay. So my feeling on this is we've had pretty good service over the years from Tenco, but this is a real failure as far as I'm concerned, and we need that truck. So I'd recommend if Viking can do it and they can match the price that we uh I mean, I don't. I know nothing about Viking. They're reputable. They do good work. All that kind of very, stuff. Very, very much so. Yes, a lot of a lot of towns use them. Just like just like Tenco. I mean, it's they're yeah. they're equivalent to each other. And where is Viking located? Williston. Vermont. And Tenco's in, in Yes. Vermont. Yes. 
Well, there's another reason. Yeah, 25 there's minutes down the road. Everybody else, everybody else feels, but if it means we get our truck a month sooner, that's telling for me. The only thing I, don't we have to to do about, I don't know what to say about the toolbox and the spinner. I like the idea yeah. of having sand under both wheels. Well, that, that's very helpful, especially on hills. Yeah. The only thing we have to do, Peter, is uh, somebody has to go over to uh, Hopkinton, New Hampshire with the salesman and uh, bring the truck back to uh, Correct. Go to Williston. Yeah. Hey, Vic, this yeah, is I, Paul. I, if I could just throw in a quick question, <laughs> any uh, any accountability taken on Ten Coast part after we've done probably 30 or 40 years worth of business with them unquestioned? Is there any... Uh, uh, did, did they have any ownership in, in completely dropping the ball after we've used them repeatedly for the last 20, they, 30, 40 they years? Did. They did admit that they dropped the ball, correct? Right. <laughs> so just just a my bad type thing. No, yep, no consolation exact, prize. No, no, that's, no, that's no. It. no. Right. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. But I'm not saying yeah, Phil. Yeah, my question was just you know to Eric and Victor, uh, as far as what's your recommendation. I I would switch over to Viking. Okay. Yeah, I've always thought Viking was a better product. It's just uh, we didn't use it before, Phil, because they call there's a there's a uh, candy cane that it's out in front of the truck that yeah that they use to hook the plow up, and uh, the people uh, the crew members thought that that was a better because we can't have the plows on in the truck in the garage, so it was easier. But Eric. Uh, has easily shown them that it's not a big deal to swap the plow. No, okay. it's not. Good. Sarah. Uh, I'm a little confused. Who's who's picking? Why do we need to pick up a truck in New Hampshire? So, uh, it's, a, it's a Tenco now, and we need to take it over to Viking. Okay, so you're buying the truck from Tenco. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Green Mountain or New oh, England. We're supposed to put the equipment on the truck. Okay. Dump the truck, the Kenworth is built. Correct. Kenworth is built. It now needs add-ons, and someone and and Tenco is not going to do it because they're going to they're thirty five to forty five days out. So you're going to take it over to Viking in Williston, and they'll put on the add-ons. Is it that right? Always, right. Sarah. Always the truck was always going to have the body and the plow and frame and all that stuff put on, but we were going to write one track. One check to uh, to uh, Kenworth of uh, I get it. In, 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 in on Shelburne Road. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're going to write one check to Kenworth for the body, and then one to Viking for the parts. No, no, no. still going to be the same way, just a different what? manufacturer. Right. But just well, the the Kenworth truck is only the trucking the truck itself. It's just the chassis. Gotcha. And then the dump body and all comes from the Sunflake company. They make it all up, and then you buy the truck complete. Okay. I, I just have to put this in the minutes, and I don't understand. <laughs> so we have a couple of decisions to make here. I mean, one decision is, um, which, which, is uh, which is Eric's recommendation, and I take it Victor's recommendation also, that we switch from Tenco to Viking. And then we have a couple of options to consider. Uh, one being the second spinner and the other being the, the other being the toolbox. Um, why don't we deal with the, why don't we deal with the Viking decision first and then hear a little more about the sander and the toolbox, if that's okay with everyone. Fine. Yep. So if there's a motion that we, that we would, that, uh, we would change from 10 go to Viking with the understanding that they're matching the price for the, uh, dump body sander plow and other associated equipment which was specced in the purchase of the truck correct that's with, exactly what i was going to move with the addition of the fifteen hundred dollar adder for the standard transmission yeah oh yeah because yeah. Yeah, yeah because they can't put the uh, pto pump on the front side of the engine there's no way so it goes off the back side of the engine so that modification is is where the 1500 comes in so Neither. i will second i will second phil's motion to uh, move the truck to Viking um, 
with the additional fifteen hundred dollar cost for the PTO equipment. Yeah. Thank you. You want something, Vic? I was just, you know, I just clarity. Uh, it wouldn't have made any difference because if Viking had to do it, they would still have the same fifteen hundred because they would still have to because of the transmission. They would have to put it in the back of the engine. So that. Yeah. Oh, that's that's fine. I mean, you know, whatever you would think they might have, they might have known that when we ordered the truck. But anyway, it's not a perfect world. We all know. Um, so is there a second for uh, for Randy's mo uh I was seconding second Phil's. Yeah. Okay, Phil. I need the okay, motion. Thanks. Randy seconded with okay. an add-on, and I'll ex I'll accept the amendment. So we're good thank to go. You. So it's been moved and seconded that we move from ten code of Viking, and we acknowledge the. The fifteen hundred dollar increased cost for the change in the setup on the hydraulic pump. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now, our uh, road foreman and road commissioner are recommending that we consider spending fourteen hundred additional dollars, guys, for the toolbox and the second spinner. Twelve hundred. It's. it's it's not a second spinner. It's it's what they call a reversible spinner. So you can reverse it when you're inside the truck to change the pattern. And what it does is it'll throw it to the other side of the truck. Got it. Got so it. you're covering so you're covering your pattern over to the right part. Got it. And there is no there is no toolbox on the truck now. Not that I can see in the paperwork. Not that I saw here. And it was twelve hundred, wasn't it? Six and six, or was it? No, seven and seven. Oh, seven and seven. Okay. Yep. Well, I think we should definitely do the reverse spinner. And if there's no toolbox, that means the stuff's going to get thrown in the cab of the truck, which is a mistake. Right. So I think we need to do it if someone's willing to make that motion. What do you guys keep in the toolbox, Eric? Well, what we used to do was be like a hammer and some uh, tow chain and, and anything else that you might need. Um, it's not the end of the world if you don't have it. It was just a suggestion. Are tire, are tire chains something that you put on only at the shop or are those able to be put on out in the field? Or Tire chains are probably too big and too heavy to fit inside the toolbox. Um, and typically you, you'd either put them on here or what we did was we'd hang them on the front on the plow side of the truck so it would mainly just it, you could put you know you could put a tow chain in there you could put a hammer in there you could put some tools that, you know in case you need to fix something guys our trucks have never not had them let's put it that way they've never not had them oh Oh, there you go, Paul. I, I think you don't. I think you don't want that stuff rattling around on the floor of the cab of the truck. It's my. Oh, no, they're kind of handy. Yep. Is that a violation to your CDL to have stuff flying around on the floor of your truck? <laughs> if not, it should be. I think it I, is. I think it is. I would make the motion to uh, approve the. Uh, Fourteen hundred dollars for the toolbox and the reversible spinner. Thank you, Randy. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Liz. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to add uh, the toolbox and the reversible spinner for a total additional cost of fourteen hundred dollars. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Um, any other any other road news? How's it going, Eric? Not going too bad at all. Can't complain, other than not having any trucks. So we're still down two <laughs> dump trucks. <laughs> yeah. So what, what's the update on that situation? Um, the transmission cooler somewhere between here and uh, Mexico. Uh, they got a tracking number, but they can't find out where it is. Uh, the the clutch fan for the other one uh, is supposed to be here on the sixteenth. Jesus. But, so. That's where we're at with those. And can you clarify which ones for which truck? I believe the trans cooler is for the international and the fan is for the uh, Western Star. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. 
And there's just no way, just to confirm, and I know we've talked about this, there's no way to jump that switch so that the fan's on all the time so we can use that truck? Not to my knowledge. Do we know or have any idea how much this fan is going to cost? Because isn't the Western Star the one we're trading in for the new truck? Sure. Yes. So is it, I mean, how much money are we going to be putting into this before we trade it in? I guess it's my question. I don't know the answer. I don't know what their, the cost is on that fan. Uh, I do know that the trans cooler for the international, they've been talking with uh, allegiance on a daily basis to find out where it's coming from and they can't, an allegiance right. can't. Can't, does not have any luck. So we need to get this fixed, is what you're saying, no matter what, you know, no even though we're what you're, yep. Okay. Okay. We got to give, them, gotta give them, a, we gotta them a working truck or they're going to give yep. us a No, I get it. Hey, Eric, and, I just wanted to say welcome. I wasn't here yeah. when you were hired, so I just wanted to say welcome aboard. Thank you. Peter. Yes. Well, we've been over, Eric and uh, and uh, Charles and uh, Jay have been over in the pit. We're trying to prep that right now for uh, some sand screening. We don't, we don't have a date yet, do we? For no. No, but I bet, I would bet we're probably getting pretty close. Yeah. Um, then the center road culverts come along. They got three done, right? The three worst ones are done as of tonight. Yep. I believe so. And they're planning on having them done by the end of the week. Correct. Uh, Hutchins, I talked with uh, with uh, Hutchins, and um, they want to start reclaiming the last week in July if they can tentatively. So they'll reclaim it and spread it, you know, it graded out, water it, um, and uh, compact it and let the traffic hit it for a couple weeks three before they uh, come in with a paving. Um, also, when the, when the culverts are done, my plan is to go back over to Center Road to finish the ditching. Um, we still have the single axle dump truck here, and we can use that if need be. Um, Hopefully, we have a big truck ready by then, but. Right. Yeah. You know, you know if Jason uh, is available there, is he going to do that again, or is he got his truck tag? I, I can ask him. I, I, I hadn't asked him, yeah. but I can. Yeah. Jason? All I would say is let's, let's be sure we're ready. So if we, need to, you know, if we need to rent a truck for a couple of days to make sure we get that work completed, let's make sure we, mm -hmm. we're ready to go. Yeah. We were gonna we were gonna move our mowing machine uh, on Friday, but it wasn't gonna get to uh, back to the dealer until late. So uh, I think Eric, I think yeah, go ahead. So I think what we're gonna be doing is having them deliver it on Monday. I talked to her, and I don't think the price difference is gonna be all that huge. They have it scheduled to go to someplace else, so we would end up losing a day and a half. And I don't really want to do that. Right. Our contract think... said it was coming in on the 18th, the 18th to the 30th, which was Monday anyways. Okay, well, I was I was under the impression it was we were supposed to be able to pick it up on Friday. Yeah, so um, that's, what, that's what the original deal was. Arinda. Okay, that's okay. So it's different than what the contract is. But anyway, right, that... so I don't I don't want to I don't want to lose a day and a half. I think I think we just need to get it so we can get it done. Yep. Yeah, the sight lines are pretty bad at a bunch of our intersections. You can't Very. see. Very. Yeah. You can't see signs either. Right. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep. Thank you. Bye, bye guys. Or bye, Eric. Uh, so we have uh, minutes to approve. So our motion I can't move. I think Phil just moved, didn't you, Phil? Yeah, I just moved. Okay, thank you, Phil. In a second. Randy, thank you. 
All in favor of approving the minutes of what's the date? I don't know if it's the 21st. 221st. Okay, thank you. Uh, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Liz abstained. Okay, yep. Guys, yeah, that's it. We need to approve renewal of the Washington County Sheriff's Department speeding enforcement contract. Jesus. The worthless contract, but I guess we don't have any choice. Maybe they'll get the speed down to 55 coming into Middlesex Village. <laughs> yeah. I think I've only seen them around like one day. Yeah, exactly. They don't, they don't do the well, state so, highways. I mean, unfortunately, it's a joke. It's a, it's a saving because yeah. we don't get the speed enforcement, but it's frustrating because uh, we want the speed enforcement, but I don't think we have any other options. The state police have nothing to offer. It's my understanding. Oh, so, I, I, I have a question on this topic, actually. Um, I think that, uh, and maybe I mistook some parts of the conversation, but did I hear... Um, I think it was Bob Lucas was saying something about um, the the posted speed limits in town aren't necessarily valid because of uh, something to do with us having to to reapprove something. Study. Is That's that what it was? Traffic study, yeah. So I guess part of my question is the speeding enforcement contract with them is kind of. Uh, a wasted effort if they're not enforceable, right? That's correct. I don't think it's. I don't think it's that they're all unenforceable. Yes, Sarah. That's what I was going to say. Okay. And and they do do some speed enforcement on Route Two and Route Twelve, right? They're supposed to. Not two, but they've seen them on twelve. Yeah. So is, is somebody I mean, able to? Uh, is somebody able to just right, articulate right. what? Yeah. We need to get up to speed and get all our signs correct and the spacing of them correct. And, you know, the traffic study, there's a cost, of course, associated with a damn traffic study. I feel like every few years we're doing traffic studies, but we need to do whatever it is. I couldn't agree more. The, the main issue is at the bottom of Shady Rill. Okay. And then there's some other issues. Yeah. Thank you. I just, I, so I wasn't just quite point. clear. Good point. So can we approve this, uh, the sheriff's contract? Is there a motion? I'll move it. Okay. Thank you, Liz. Second. Is that the only change is just that we're just contracting with them at a different rate? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And we never, they never fulfill it anyway, do they? No. I'll, I'll second it. They never spend the money. They never spend the money. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. We paid twelve hundred dollars to them this year out of a seven thousand dollar budget. Right. Good job. Um, I have one one quick item, and and uh, we don't need to we don't need to decide tonight. We can't decide tonight. But uh, Dick Picard called me this week and said. Uh, we had told him last year that we plan to paint the back of the fire station. And he wants to know if we want to do that uh, late summer and early fall. He has, he has the time to do it. Uh, the next step would be to, of course, get an estimate from him and approve, uh, and approve the estimate. But uh, I think we need to do it. The back of the fire station looks really bad and it's deteriorating. But I don't know how others feel. If we're going to burn the damn thing down or tear it down, there's not much point in painting. Yeah, I would hate to waste money painting it if we're yeah. if we're going to, you know, do something like that. All I would all I would say is, I made all the members of the select board promise me when we uh, when we built the new fire station, if we couldn't find a good use for that building, that we'd tear it down within two years. Well, guess what? Here we are. What ten years later? We we haven't we haven't torn the damn thing down yet and we painted three sides of it and we painted the roof so i don't know what the answer is i'm gonna i would suggest we get an estimate from from him and uh let everybody think about this but yeah. yes sarah so i've been talking to uh karen 
um, who owns Roots Farm, the Roots Farm stand. She's got a she's got a major issue where she is the the parking and the the parking uh, is is impossible there, and deliveries are even more impossible there. And she's this is very preliminary, but it's wondering if there's some way to kind of remove the fire station and they could use the back of that as a lot for their cars or maybe even deliveries to walk down. This isn't some, this is just very preliminary. And I don't know if she would have to lease it from the town or if she would have to buy the land or whatever that works, but uh, they can't, they're looking for a, another curb cut from V-Trans on Route 2 and they're just not gonna get it. They, it's impossible. Why can't, they, why, um, why can't they expand their parking behind the building there? Because it drops off. Fill it in. I, don't know. <laughs> I think the bigger trick is not just the parking; it's the backing a packing a truck in and out. These big tractor trailers that deliver their stuff—they're backing in and out. And it's just not working on that in, in the the, the curb cuts they currently have. To back a tractor trailer in up where the fire station is and roll the stuff down the hill—that doesn't make any sense. She's looking, or just using that for employee parking. Oh, okay. I mean, the one the one thing I would say is so we're where that old garage was, where those thousands of tires were. Remember that? We yeah. were considering uh, considering putting a fire station there at one time when we built our new fire station. That is more or less on a level with her parking lot. And if she wanted to consider... The issue is not the, is not the, is that it's the in, egress and it's the entrance and egress of tractor trailers. You've got, if you look at her lot, she's got these two, uh, these got these two curb cuts and she can't, it's impossible to get those trucks in there and out. So here's, out. Here's, anyway, I'm just saying that someone is looking. I, at, here's what I would suggest. Come to us with a, a proposal, but I like the idea of, utilizing the land that's down on the level with her parking lot somehow and whether that can work for her or not or whether it makes no sense i don't know but there's a pretty good sized piece of land there and we cleaned it all up and removed all the tires so it shouldn't be that big a deal to do it and we need to agree on some kind of rental agreement or land sale or who knows what but yeah well so, she owns that land no she doesn't own our land she owns that she land behind the, the, land the old garages she bought it. They have damp staff bought it. That's how we bought the town forest. Oh, uh, you might be right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. You Sorry. might be right. I'm right. I have a, a quick question. Um, what do we have stored in the old firehouse at this point? Oh, Not we have some. We have some highway equipment. We use it in the winter time. We put the chipper in there and a few other things. But other than that, there's. Would we be interested in renting it on a short-term basis to CV Fiber as a warehouse while they're in construction phase, which could be this fall into next spring? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Because um, when I was... I, know the all the garage, I mean, I don't think the power's on in there right now, but that's that's easy to fix. There's no heat in there. No I, I told you that. And, and you know, I, I don't think they care. This is just, you know, um, heavy spools of wire um, and other equipment that they need or other supplies that they need to string the fiber. And they're, I mean, and, and again, we're one of the first or the first town that's going to be built out and they want they want staging areas where they can put um, stuff. And when I was talking, you know, she asked about it and I said, well, we've got this old firehouse. And they were like, huh, would you want to rent it? I said, well, I'll ask. So is the floor in there capable of taking a uh, forklift? Is it? Oh, could it support a forklift? I would say yes. We had heavy fire trucks in there. Probably. I mean, it's well, I am just. I was just thinking about the floor being cracked. I thought the last time I looked in there, it was all cracked up and at different levels. So it may be difficult for a, a forklift to drive in and out with heavy spools of wire. Okay. So somebody might just want to look at that. Yeah. I mean, I could say, look, look, come over and take a look at it. And if it's something you want to pursue, then we can do that. Yeah. Would we consider renting parking spaces to their employees? Like just at the town hall? It's a good idea. 
It's not a lot of money. Parking, I think the parking is limited enough at the town hall. Well, I don't think it is. I mean, and, how many people do you get here on a regular basis? Out back, it's in the back. It's it's there's there's not much going on. They only have to be in the winter. They have to get out of the way so that the the road crew can get their stuff in and out of the garage. Well, let's let her come back to us. How many spaces she needs, what she wants. Let's not let's not block the doors if CB Fiber can use it. Okay. Can I just talk to you guys about one other thing, very briefly? Yes. So to, next Tuesday, you're going to meet at Rumney at five o'clock. And go over to the look at the north to, to look at North Bear yeah. Swamp or whatever you yeah. remember. Yeah. So now. we're supposed to have thunderstorms. Not saying that's going to happen, but should there be a contingency in case you guys, if in case it's it's a storm? If they're violent thunderstorms, we postpone them. But if it's just a shower or a light rain or whatever, we're going to stand out there and look at it. Bring you here. Can I stay here? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I have no, one other question. You out there holding a flag to show us where to stand. Oh, that's Sarah. good. I have one other question for Dorinda. Did did you receive an invoice from CV Fiber for the money that we? Have? Okay, I'll contact them again. No, I told her they I'm need saying. to send no, an invoice. Okay. I'll hit them up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to meet at Romney at five, and then the board meeting will start at six. Is that the plan? Right. Well, it may be that we start off with a quick BCA meeting and then go into the select board. Okay. Okay, that's fine. If that's okay with the chair, the BCA chair. Yeah. That is fine. <laughs> and that's what we should do. Um, would it be okay, since I bike on that road all the time, that I don't go? Is there a reason why I would need to go? I've seen it on a very regular basis, all the puddles and all the problems. Should I, I'm happy to come, but you like if I- be out there to represent the interests of the bikers who use that road. Okay. No, you do not. I, I would say you do not need to be there. The discussion is not going to take place out there. We're going to inspect it, and then the discussion will be at the board meeting. So yeah, I mean, I, I literally see I it. Don't mean to sound, I don't mean to sound snarky. You've got plenty mm -hmm. to do. I know. Okay. Wait, Wait a minute. My yes. is that not a question. Um, yeah. I want to check in on two things. One is um, you're obviously going to have the road commissioner and the road foreman invited, right, to that walk. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, great. And we're we're taking care of inviting the neighbors from the trails committee. So okay. That covers everybody. The um, you know, the one thing that, that Liz just mentioned, obviously when you're there, you're going to be looking at a little bigger picture. Everybody knows the puddles are there. I think the idea is to say, okay, what are some options? What are some possible solutions? And that would include probably looking at, you know, the side of the trail that's grown up and the berms that are there and things like that. So it's not just going to be going to look at the puddles, puddles we all know about and leaving. It'll be a little more, a deeper inspection, I would guess. Okay, I'll Michael, what, Michael, what solutions are you looking for? What problems are your solutions to what problems? Um, well, the conversation was whether or not to turn it to a trail. That's the main reason that you're starting this idea, but we're not wedded to turning it into a trail. We want something that is usable by bikers and walkers um, in better shape than now, but we don't want a major overhaul of the roads so that everybody's going through there at 50 miles an hour. Start and to go through at 10 miles an hour with your four wheeler? Well, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I think you raised last time, Vic, also that there are people who drive their trucks through there. Right. And we're, not, we're not saying that shouldn't happen, right. but for the long term. Look, 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 guys, I, I don't mean to cut you off, Michael. Let's go out and do the inspection and then have the discussion. Yeah. And that, okay. that's, that's fine. I don't want to have the discussion in advance of the inspection. Yeah, it's just that's a matter of I'm just wondering what solutions you wanted to answer. That's so. No. Be aware it's looking from end to end, and it's going to be two 14 foot lanes with sidewalks and bike paths. There you go. Um, can I actually ask a question? 
Yes. Not but... about this this road, but maybe it's a question for Vic. Um, you know, Vic, uh, Bulldog Road between Bulldog Salvage Yard and um, East Hill Road. You know that? Slaughterhouse right? Road. Yes. Slaughterhouse. Yes. Um, so there's a giant tree that's down that's really dangerous. Like it's not, it's like hanging. Uh, mm -hmm. It looks like it just came down recently. And I'm not sure, is that a town job? to? Because it's dangerous. It's not like, I, I wouldn't even recommend that like someone who doesn't have a lot of experience take it down because it's hanging from high up. It requires sort of a, a skilled person. Is that something the town does or would that be like a, somebody who owns that land i would have the tree warden look at it isn't that his role i i, I don't know that's what i'm asking i just noticed it yesterday and it's, and it, it's is, it is it is our responsibility to keep class four roads okay hey we don't want a tree dropping on somebody's head when they're hiking biking horsing four-wheeling yeah. whatever it is so the answer is unfortunately yes i think it's us okay Anyway, well, if, it's too difficult, to... if it's too difficult, Liz, for us to do and we feel that it's a danger with the guys we got, that then we hire it out. It's kind of like the trees in front of uh, Steve Martin's uh, barn. Okay. Right. So anyway, it's not far past Jamie's. Um, you would go from that direction okay. and just literally Liz, walk up. You would see don't it. You have, don't you have your electric chainsaw, Liz? Can well, I, was, I would never do that. This tree is... <laughs> far too scary i'm just teasing you i'm just teasing <laughs> we'll go up and take a look at it liz and uh we'll thank you Vic. let you know thanks okay oh anything else anyone sarah correspondence we've got we've got orders to sign we've now once again got a full-fledged select board so that's a good thing victor congratulations welcome and condolences all of those all of those guys, things. But, you guys uh, need to sign the listers uh, errors and omissions. You. you need to sign the Washington County Sheriff's thing. Yep. Yep. Yes, I'll welcome to the board, Victor. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I mean it. It was it was good that we had so many people interested. It was. It was. Very good. Yep. Okay, thank you, everyone. See you next so, week. We'll, uh, we'll see you at the Romney School if heaven forbid there's some horrendous uh weather event forecast we'll uh we'll be in touch by the middle of the day we won't wait till wait till four o'clock okay five o'clock okay, good okay bye everybody thank you bye everybody thank you, bye, everybody. Thank you.